So the prayer lives of the parents of the saints. You know, what were their interior prayer lives like? Yeah, the, yeah. Dis the, the discipline of their prayer life, the routine of it, sure. the structure, the frequency, the depth of, of how yeah. seriously they took their prayer lives. Like, what did that look yeah. like in some of the stories that yeah. you read? Yeah, yeah. Well, and just to go back to your point, because I know, Jason, I, I really admire, you know, your love to, you know, to, to preach purity uh, and chastity. And one thing just with St. Teresa's parents, that they were very strict in terms of modesty with their children. Like they wouldn't allow their daughters to wear like sleeveless uh, dresses. They had to have, um, you know, uh, their, their, um, they had to go down to their elbows. And even when their children would walk in the streets, they wanted to make sure in the summertime, a lot of people in France, you know, they'd be changing. And, you know, in the upstairs rooms, you could see people changing. They go, uh, daughters, please keep your eyes, you know, um, kind of practicing custody of the eyes. So I think that was just something I just wanted to touch on, just the importance of modesty in these in these parents and even um there was a girl that was um you know she was kind of whispering in one of um saint Teresa's sister's ears and zelly goes uh, she called her you know one zelly's um sister celine and said you know what's going on here and then she dismissed that girl and said you need to go home because she kind of heard some some bad stuff and that girl ended up becoming a nun so i thought that was like hey this mother is like she's watching her kids and they watched every single book that would come into the house. Like they made sure that their kids were not, um, you know, as far as, you know, infiltrated with, you know, some impure topics. And, and it's interesting because St. Teresa of Avila, her mother was uh, flat out gorgeous and she practiced, you know, loved modesty, but she also liked, you know, books on chivalry. And I, I mentioned that the books, Teresa of Avila was really influenced um, to a negative degree by reading these books she started like putting all this makeup on and then she also had a cousin that was kind of very immodest and that cousin like influenced her and and so i think the point is teresa Vavil was saying it's, it's really important for parents to know not only what your kids are reading but also like their friends and, and i think um you know and that was that was something that really struck me um on, on both of those parents on teresa Vavil's parents and just the way she was raised and uh, teresa and uh, teresa was sued, so. That's awesome. Yeah. No, yeah. Mean, thank you for the research you've put into this yeah. thing. Because yeah. I mean, I love yeah. reading Lives of the Saints. You just yeah. find so many jewels when you're mining away at that. But yeah. to do the heavy lifting to actually research yeah. the lives, I mean, the literature dig has to be so much deeper in yeah. terms of where to go to find sure. all that stuff. So, sure. uh, so, so, yeah, so back in terms yeah. of their prayer yeah. lives, what kind of stuff yeah. did you find yeah. there? Yeah. Of just like, yeah. Well, yeah. what do the dad's prayer lives look like? What do the mom's sure. prayer lives look like? Correct. Yeah, one of the things that I, I found was fascinating, you know, with. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to switch over to a different Saint, uh, Saint Gianna Mola and, uh, and her parents were Alberto and Maria Beretta and Alberto would wake up every day at 5 AM and he would go to mass and they lived close to a Capuchin friary. He would wake up and his wife would like prepare him his meal and then go to mass. And then when he come back, like again, his wife kind of just the servant's heart would serve her husband. And then he go off to work and then um, Maria would wake up the rest of the kids and they would all walk, you know, to a later mass and they go to daily mass together. So that was that was two of them. Then you also had like Padre Pio's parents. You know, they went to daily mass um, devotions to the rosary. And, you know, what's neat about Padre Pio's parents. They weren't even they weren't very educated. I don't think they could even read or write. And, and I often think as parents, we feel like um, that this is a daunting task. Like we must have like, you know. Uh, I know you went to Franciscan and I went to Franciscan as well, but to, you know, you don't need a PhD. You don't need a master's from Franciscan university. I mean, although it helps, but, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> but like, you know, you, you can, you, the most important thing is to get your children to heaven and not Harvard. And, you know, and I think that that's, you know, having that deep faith and that devotion, it does pass on. Um, and, and other things like, you know, St. Teresa's parents, when they were first married, they would walk to, um, you know, to make a visit at the blessed sacrament every evening. Um, and, and I'll give you another story. Um, St. Gemma Galgani, her mom loved uh, taking her children to confession. You know, it was every Saturday it was scheduled. And even when, when her mother got sick later in life and she would even have a neighbor take the kids, that's how, that's how much she believed in, you know, the power of confession and, uh, and these, and these saints too, you know, they, they had, um, you know, spiritual direction. They, they went on, I'd say even retreats was important. And this is one thing that I think is really key. Um, you know, you have, um, uh, St. Alphonsus de Liguori, you know, uh, one of the greatest saints, and his father would take him on an a annual retreat with him. And I'm like, what's the best thing that you can take, you know, your children? I mean, we take them fishing, you know, but really the most manliest thing I think a father can do is to take their son to mass with them. And, and, and Jason, in your beautiful book, and I actually use that as a source, 
um, the, you know, Jason's book, the, the five great love, five greatest loves, right? Did I get that correct? Yeah. St. John Paul yeah. the Great is yeah. five yeah. loves. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. His, and you know how John Paul the second, you know, they, after his mother passed away, they would go to daily mass together and they would pray, um, scriptures in the evening. And, uh, it's no surprise John Paul the second's parents cause for canonization has been opened. So, um, it's, it's, you know, these saints parents, I'll go on a limb and say that I go out on a limb and say that these parents are, some of them were even holier than their children. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah so, so parents out there, especially being in the middle of Advent right now, get the family to confession. Yeah. You know, I think it's a, it's a great time yeah. to examine your conscience, um, with, yeah. your, with your family. Cause if you don't think you really sinned a lot that month, you got like yeah. four people standing next to you that will give you like a litany of your imperfections, <laughs> you know, to, you know, to the one. So, you know, so it's get the family confession. Another little Advent devotion we've stumbled on is, um, uh, we mentioned this often at the top of the show, the hollow app that you can get. Um, yeah. they now have Advent devotions available on the app. They've got the Advent music. They just added to this. So like, you know, we get in the car in the morning, just pop in some Advent music. And yeah. so, um, it, we'll put in the, uh, the footer there in the show notes where you can get this and download it for free for, I think it's like 14 or 30 days to try out the hollow yeah. app, but, but check that out. So that way you can sanctify the car rides with the kids, pop in some Advent music on the way to confession this weekend. But yeah, most, most parishes, Saturday afternoons pair, you know, yeah. confessions are going to be available. So get the family there. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip, but if you want to see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we want to invite you to help us share this message. And there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. We release videos every single day and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at patreon.com slash Jason Everett. That helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip, but if you want to see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we want to invite you to help us share this message. And there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. We release videos every single day and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at Patreon dot com slash Jason Everett that helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless.